to West Country Wanderings today. We're at Worcestershire Parkway on day 10 of the Cotswold Way, catching the train towards Evesham and a bus to restart our walk from the wonderful Cotswold town of Broadway. Here at this new station, I believe it opened last year and it's actually on two levels. We're on the upper level, which is the line from Hereford through to Paddington, and it passes over the higher level. On a higher level of the line which goes from Cheltenham to Birmingham, which is just down here. at Evesham station, just got off the train now, now we need to find the bus, but before we do, just find this wonderful little garden here. It's won uh, many awards, and uh, it's designed to promote the line, uh, known as the Cotswold Line, which runs between Hereford through uh, Malvern Hills, Worcester, uh, down towards Oxford, so it's covering the uh, north part of the Cotswold Escarpment, which we've been covering here on the, the Cotswold Way here on Part 10. And I've just noticed it's won the gold at the Evesham in Bloom contest, uh, man, won many uh, certificates of excellence as well. station here at uh, Evesham's in wonderful condition, typical country GWR station, it's uh, still got its original awnings and station buildings which is wonderful to see. We are back in Broadway, making our way up towards Broadway Tower. Just behind me is one of the very oldest buildings in Worcestershire, it's 14th century, can't remember the exact name, I'll drop that in as a subtitle. Walking along the far end of the high street at Broadway, it's getting a little bit quieter towards the end. It's really tricksy, like I said last time, to film in uh, Broadway, particularly in the uh, summer months with lots of tourists. So uh, I've just come off the bus from Evesham. It's about a 20-minute uh, bus ride. The only thing to note, if you do intend to do the Cotswold via public transport, and it is tricksy, it's the first time I've done, done it using public transport from home on this section. It's the last leg of the Cotswold Way where we head to Chipping Camden today. Just to note that I believe there's only three buses a day um, which leave from Evesham. <clears throat> there are other buses um, from Cheltenham and from Stratford-upon-Avon towards Broadway, but they're also very infrequent. I think the Stratford bus only is just once a day and the Cheltenham bus perhaps twice. So they're all pretty infrequent and uh, bumpy bus ride. The trains were brilliant. I had to change at uh, Cheltenham and uh, Worcestershire Parkway. That was all ran swimmingly. All the trains were on time. Very uh, smooth journeys. Uh, but the bus, uh, yeah, the driver had to brake uh, harshly a couple of times, and uh, which caught uh, a couple of the passengers out who didn't have the seat belts on. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'd still prefer the, the old train over a bus any day. But uh, alas, there is no direct rail route here apart from the. Uh, Steam Railway, which isn't that frequent, although it is a highly recommended uh, day out if you're in this part of the world. Anyway, we're co continuing our way north. We need to cross over the road here and then go on to the Cotswold Way proper. So here we go. This is the sign behind me which tells me that it's one and a quarter miles to Broadway Tower, but of course it is a very steep climb and uh, we'll have a break and I'll tell you more about uh, Broadway Tower when we get to the top and how it was built and who built it and why and we'll have a look at the views across us there. It is starting to brighten up, it was rainy when I left home, um, quite heavy rain, we move away from that busy road <laughs> and uh, yeah we're moving away from the high street now. We're moving down between some uh, cottages and that will take us across the field on the path on the way up to Broadway Tower.
and the noise of the traffic has been replaced by the noise of the sheep. Just come into the fields are away from uh, Broadway Village now. So generally speaking, a lot quieter apart from the sheep. But uh, as we'll climb it, it'll get a lot quieter. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad to be out of the uh, crowds of tourists. Um, it is a very attractive uh, village, Broadway, as you may have seen from the photos at the end of the last Cotswold Valley Log Number Nine. And uh, so I'm not going to film it again. <laughs> and um, I was glad to be out of it, to be honest. It's a lot of people around there, and uh, much more durable to be out. back here, back on. Cotswold Way and join the glorious countryside. The advantage of uh, using public transport of course is that today I don't need to walk back to my vehicle which is great. The disadvantage is that uh, it's a much later start because uh, I've been on three trains and a bus and waiting a half an hour for the bus and all of that. Um, it means we're uh, much later starting. I normally like to be on the way by about uh, nine o'clock and it's now half past 11. But uh, as I say, I don't have that uh, dreaded return walk back again. So that's all good. Broadway Tower was built in 1799 by the Earl of Coventry. And legend has it that there was a celebration of a naval battle. I can't remember the name of the naval battle, and there was another uh, gentleman involved, an admiral, who lived nearby, uh, just over the Worcestershire border into Ships and Elm Stour, which lies in uh, Warwickshire. And uh, had the tower built, and the legend is that uh, his wife wanted to see the tower from their garden. And the Coventrys lived at Croom, Croom Hall. Um, just outside the city of Worcester is uh, somewhere I've been several times and I hope to do again for a vlog here on West Country Wanderings at some point in the not too distant future. Anyway, they lived there and uh, so they lit a bonfire. In fact, there was a, a range of bonfires all over the uh, Cotswold edge of the escarpment to celebrate this naval battle. And uh, when Lady Coventry saw that she could see this particular bonfire from her garden, very extensive capability brown design garden. <laughs> she thought that uh, that would be a perfect spot for a tower, so it was built. And uh, I think then in the 1820s, 1823, it then became derelict. In the mid-1820s, it was purchased by two lecturers from Oxford University, just down the A44, and uh, they looked after it for a while until it fell into another ruin once more. And uh, it was again restored and it seemed to go through that cycle of being um, maintained and then abandoned by various different owners until we reached 1971 when it was owned by the family that look after the uh, Arboretum at Batsford, just uh, the other side of uh, Morton in Marsh. They holded it for a bit. It's now a country park and in the care of the uh, Worcestershire County Council. So how are you all? I hope you're all well. Um, and if I'm a bit out of breath, it's because uh, there is a bit of a contour here as we climb the hill. In fact, that's uh, how Broadway made its trade before, uh, what was it called? William Morris discovered it in inverted commas and it became uh, commercial in terms of tourism. But before that, it was on the main coaching route between Worcester and Oxford. And of course, the uh, coach horses needed to make their way up these very steep fish hill. And we're on a footpath, <laughs> a breath, <laughs> which runs parallel to that here on the Cotswold Way, also climbing that very same hill. Like uh, to give a big shout out to all of my subscribers and all the people that are regular watch my channel if you don't subscribe. I really do appreciate it, really do appreciate the support. A few people to mention, I'd like to mention Uncle Peter who lives in Adelaide in South Australia. I hope the uh, winter isn't too bad for you down there in the Adelaide Hills. I visited it a couple of times and uh, quite an extraordinary place, although it's a little bit outside uh, West Country Wanderings region <laughs> to be covering for vlogs. And uh, also like to thank 
Debs, some Debs Adventures. Uh, hi Debs, thank you again for your support. And also to Roy Edwards. Thanks Roy, let's see if I can find any kissing gates for you. <laughs> and all of my new subscribers, I've now I've got subscribers in uh, North America and I've got a couple of other people that uh, subscribe that live in Australia. And uh, I've got relatives that follow me that live in Devon and Cornwall. Hi, and also in Gloucestershire. Hello, so hello to you all. Hope you're enjoying the, uh, here we are, part 10 on the Cotswold Way. And uh, so this will be kind of end of part one when I finish today, hopefully finish today, in Chipping Camden. I've just come back from Devon. I've done a couple of vlogs down there in case you've missed them. I've done one revisit to the Grand Western Canal, which is in mid Devon, and also I've done one at Knights Hayes Court Gardens. This is the first video you've seen on West Country Wanderings. Hello! <laughs> Where have you been? And you've missed the other nine parts of the Cotswold Way. But don't fret, they're all in order. If you go onto my channel on YouTube, you'll see that it's divided into sections, and there's a separate section for the Cotswold Way. And they're in numerical order, starting at number one, which is at Far West Street. You probably think, why don't I start in Bath? I haven't got to Bath yet. <laughs> so I'm started near Stroud, working my way north to complete the journey north and then very shortly I'll be starting my way south back from Far West Strip down to Bath but they're in numerical order and by the time it's all finished there'll be approximately 20 of them. Views now really opening up that's uh, Broadway Village down there where we started of course. Then we have uh, Breeden Hill just over there. I'm not sure what the immediate hill is in front of that. I will drop the subtitle in and find out for you. Of course beyond that in between those two hills you have the Mulvins and in fact uh, that's still somewhere I hope to go over the next uh, couple of weeks or so in fitting in uh, a Cotswold Way uh, day trip on the train to Melbourne to do some walking on the hills there. Absolutely love that spot. Up here it's also got a lot windier, <laughs> but uh, it's great enough. Just uh, took advantage of the seat there to enjoy the, the view, which is wonderful. Just been thinking using the public transport, the bus there from Evesham to here to Broadway, and it's just three buses a day. and. Uh, how that kind of forces people into their cars and indeed people that don't have cars are at a disadvantage in access in the countryside and as we have seen on the Cotswold Way we've seen uh, places like Crickley Hill and Lackhampton Hill and here at uh, Broadway Country Park that these are open spaces that people really crave these days and you see the car parks and the car parks are absolutely crowded but there are, is no alternative means of getting to these locations apart from cars and indeed obviously bikes, motorbikes and uh, e-bikes. But uh, in terms of just pure public transport, there's, there's nothing at all, nothing. And uh, I think the uh, bus companies are missing a trick there. I know they'd have to time it, I'm not saying it would be a bus every half an hour, indeed an hour, but uh, I think a few services to green open spaces that are popular for people would be a very, very good idea. Now, of course, when I reach Chipping Camden, that's not the end of the Cotswold Way, so there will still be more few weeks 
once I head south to Bath. But of course, once that's over, and that'll be probably finishing, I guess, round about the middle of October, um, I've got other plans for the future for that. Uh, obviously, you're a bit more limited as you head into the winter in terms of uh, available daylight and doing places out. I still will continue to do that, though. And indeed, in terms of photography, the winter time can actually be uh, fantastic as long as it's not checking it down with rain. You can get some great shots when the uh, angle of the light is low and you get mist effects and that sort of thing. Um, so that, that'll continue. I'm also looking to do some National Trust places. A couple of ones I've got in mind, not just penciling them in, is uh, Newark Park, which is not far from where I live. Uh, maybe uh, Durham Park near Bath. And also, um, I think it's called Chasselton House, which is the other side of Stoat on the, near the Warwickshire border. So those ones are doable, maybe coming up soon. But after that, I've been thinking long term, going into next year, where will uh, West Country wanderings be going? And um, we'll still be going down to Devon and Cornwall, as I say, we've just had a couple of vlogs from Devon. And uh, in terms of long distance paths, one that I've been thinking of, I haven't yet decided to do it. Uh, I did initially conjure with the idea of doing the Thames Way, but of course the Thames Way isn't really in West Country Wanderings territory at all because it takes you into the southeast and that's way off beam from the area that I generally cover. So one I did think about, it's actually twice the length of the Cotswold Way, is the Severn Way. And it starts in a, a mountain called Plymouth in Wales and obviously flows down to the Bristol Channel by the city of Bristol. It's a bit different walking than the Cotswold Way, of course most of it's generally flat because you're gently sloping down to the sea. So I've been thinking about that. Uh, if you've got any ideas or opinions on that, if it's if the Seven Way is one you, you think you'd like to see here on West Country Wanderings, then please drop a comment below. Or if you have any alternative suggestions. Uh, obviously my time and transport is limited, so it does need to be within a reasonable distance of where I'm cur currently living, which is uh, Gloucestershire, so places in uh, Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland, although I'd love to go back to those places for the time being are out and I say that's not what I generally cover in here on West Country Wanderings. Just coming away from Broadway Town now. Hope you enjoyed that with the deer. So I'm making my way over to a quarry, which has a picnic area. I've decided to have my lunch there rather than here because it was quite busy here at Broadway Tower. But I fitted some footage of the uh, tower itself and the deer. Currently walking along the old A44 here at near the top of Fish Hill, which is where the uh, picnic area is, which I'm going to where I'm going to stop to have my lunch today. And uh, yeah, has been quite a busy uh, 
Cotswold Way so far in terms of the path uh, hasn't been as relaxing as I hoped. Um, I think mainly because a lot of people that visit Broadway then do the walk up to the Tower. I think it's a thing to do and it's about uh, a mile and a half to the Tower and back so it makes a nice three mile round walk with a nice downhill section. Now we've left uh, Broadway Tower heading towards Chipping Camden. It's much quieter here. <laughs> it's back to uh, as I normally expect the Cotswold Way to be. Which is, uh, which is great once more, so uh, I'm really pleased about that. So I can see the old uh, cat size in the road here, uh, but it is no longer a road, apart from an access for a couple of houses. The road was widened here at the top of uh, Fish Hill. This is the point where we cross over the busy 44, and uh, we also re-enter Gloucestershire. We've been in Worcestershire since the start of the walk, and we re-enter Gloucestershire, and of course Chipping Camden is in Gloucestershire itself, so uh, just turn the camera around, you'll see what I'm viewing at at the moment. Yep, so welcome to Gloucestershire, Cotswold district, but we are not walking along the road. The uh, footpath to the Cotswold Way crosses over the road here, not as bad as crossing the air balloon, <laughs> if you remember that. And uh, we'll head down to the picnic area. Just imagine in the days gone by all those coach and horses struggling up the top of the hill. They would breathe a sigh of relief and had some water when they got here. Just as I go and stop and have some lunch. See you in a bit. So we're back on the way. Just had lunch. Fueled up. Watered up. And uh, feeling a little bit refreshed. Although I'm conscious of the time because uh, I've got a bus to catch just before half past four in Chipping Camden. And it's now just after one. So we've still got three and a bit miles to go. Doesn't sound much but obviously it takes a bit longer when you're doing pieces to camera and filming as well. So uh, we will crack on here. So we're leaving Fish Hill now. Nice lots of seating here, which is uh, great for people to just come up the hill and uh, enjoy the views and then have a, a picnic. Well, that was a sudden change of scenery. We've just come out of the uh, woodland bit there by the picnic area into some really open fields and the uh, Views stretching right across the uh, Cotswold Plain down towards Chipping Camden, the village. Sorry, town should I say. Important town in uh, North Gloucestershire, Chipping Camden. An important uh, trading route. And obviously it's another wall town like North Leach and Sirencester. It made its uh, name and profit and money from trading wool. I've been to Chipping Camden before a few times. It's a lovely uh, Cotswold town. It's less showy than uh, Broadway, but uh, I think it's equally as beautiful and uh, less touristy, though it does cater for tourists. They're not there in their throngs like they are at uh, Broadway and uh, Borton on Water. So uh, yeah, that I will have a explore around the town. I don't know how much filming I can do, but at the, the very least, I'll be doing one of my photo vlogs where we've got some shots set to music just to highlight and I'll drop in some subtitles telling you about the key points of the history of the town when we reach it. Feeling a mixture of emotions at the moment because um, obviously this isn't the end of the Cotswold Way for me although we're now reaching the uh, half what is the halfway point for most people it's the end either the start or the end of their uh, Cotswold Way journey it just feel a bit strange to, to think I've walked from just outside Stroud to here and well back again so I, I've nearly done the entire length of the Cotswold Way because most times I've been walking back to my car obviously not today and uh, not the first day that I did either but uh, it will uh, the, going back as we go down to Bath the uh, the last day there I'll be catching the train to Bath I'm not quite sure how that's going to to work yet the logistics of that I've got to plan that route out it'd be quite interesting it took me quite a bit of planning to to fit in all the buses and work out where the trains needed to be as well in terms of timing it's not easy uh, planning public transport I can tell you if you're not familiar with it uh, give it a go plan to a favorite place you normally drive to and plan how you'd get there using public transport trains and buses and you'll realize how tricksy it can uh, can actually be um 
Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll be heading down to Bass. The first one, just to mention uh, vlog number 11, when I leave from Far West Strip Farm, will be a circular walk. One, an unusual one because you have a blue route, which we mentioned these before, but there's an alternative route. So I'll be walking up to the top of Froster Hill to Coley Peak, uh, where there are a couple of uh, Neolithic sites we'll look at, and then we'll head back on a blue route to explore part of the Stratwater Canal. Not sure what sort of crop that is. I've just uh, taken a couple of stills of it as well and uh, see if I can identify that when I get home and drop a link in. It's not uh, wheat or barley. It looks like a grass, so it might be a grass crop for maybe for cattle feed for the winter. In terms of weather and the temperature, I think we started off about 15 degrees, 14, 15 degrees, rather wet when I left home. And uh, now it's uh, probably around about 20, 21, brightened up considerably and dried up. Very pleasant. Sorry I'm not able to bring you any smooth tripod shots today. It was just too bulky to bring my tripod onto the train and then try and bundle it into a bus. Um, I normally keep my tripod with me and I normally do some um, footage so you can actually see me walking along the way. Uh, obviously that's not possible without the old uh, tripod but uh, hopefully it's not too bad so uh, it gives you a flavour of what this section of the way is like. This part of the route is known as the Mile Drive. I'm not quite sure why it's so wide. Um, obviously a mile because it's uh, presumably it's a mile long. I haven't measured it but I guess so. Um, there is something over on the left, I don't know if it's going to be marked, called the Kifts, Kifts, that's K-I-F-T-S, Kifts Gate Stone. I'm not sure of the uh, history of that, whether it's associated with the things like the Rollwright Stones not far away over in uh, Oxfordshire. Um, again, I'll do a little research and drop it in the usual way. Um, anyway, our next stop on the walk here is Dover's Hill, which is uh, our final summit on uh, this part of the route. And then we drop down to our descent towards Chipping Camden. really strange now because you get a, a real sense that the end is inside literally and uh, feel a bit of elation coming on that uh, yes I've uh, kind of achieved uh, the halfway uh, mark and I know uh, people pre through it in uh, people do it in six sometimes five days the whole thing from Bath that uh, I've been taking my time and uh, savoring it as I said in uh, I think it was vlog number two we talked a bit of length about that didn't we whole mindfulness thing so I'll go there again but uh, yes I've, I've really enjoyed it so far and I'm looking forward to the uh, journey south and I uh, hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, following along the journey with me too So here we are on the top of Dover's Hill, also at the topograph point. It's not that clear, I've done a photograph, I'm not sure how well it's going to come out. So I'll just highlight some of the features here. Memory of Benjamin Martin Chandler and Frederick Landseer Griggs, RA. By whose efforts Dover's Hill 
was acquired for the National Trust in 1926. So nearly 100 years ago, fantastic that it's, it's here. Just point out uh, some of the things you can see and how far away they are. Where we started, I got off the train at Evesham, seven miles away. Uh, Worcester, city of Worcester, 20 miles. Clear Hill, I've mentioned that one before. Uh, to today on Clear Hill, we've got uh, 41 miles away over in uh, Shropshire. Brankley is 44 miles away. Pershaw, where the fantastic Abbey is, 13 miles. The Malvern Hills, 25. Chicksbury, 16. And moving around this side, City of Birmingham, 30. Alcester in Warwickshire, 11 miles. Stratford, good old Stratford Avon, or oh, the Bear, just, just 10 miles away. Coventry's 28, Warwick 18, Mickleton 3, Leamington Spa 20. So it just gives you flavour of where we are in this part of the world. So our journey continues here amongst the sheep again, back where we started at Broadway, amongst the sheep, lots of sheep on the top of the hill here, which is a, a very Cotswold thing indeed. And that's of course how uh, Cotswold has gained its wealth. But um, yeah, we're continuing along the top and then we're going to bend inland and then make our descent down to Chipping Camden. I'd like to send a shout out to a couple of people. Uh, first of all, a new subscriber, a gentleman called Brian Smith. And uh, hi, Brian. Uh, thank you for subscribing to my channel. Uh, Brian um, is restricted on his mobility and uh, he's enjoying the walks along the Cotswold Way. Um, something he's wanted to do, so he's enjoying the uh, scenery. And it is fantastic here. Um, I wish you could be here. It's, it's absolutely great. And uh, also, I'd like to give a shout out to my mum. My mum had a stroke last year, and I know she also look, likes enjoying looking at the uh, views out and about across the Cotswolds. So, so hi to both of you guys. Some of you uh, regular subscribers and viewers to my channel will know that I do touch on uh, mental health. Indeed, there's a, a whole video that I've done about it in a separate section near the bottom on my channel. And uh, just, this isn't going to turn into a whole session about mental health, don't worry. Uh, just something to briefly mention, really, that uh, has crossed my mind. I do struggle with depression and anxiety. And one of the things that, uh, it sounds rather trivial, that I was getting very anxious about today was the public transport and indeed everything being on time but particularly buses i don't trains i'm fine with i've used trains for many years and quite familiar with how they, they they operate and everything buses much less so i was getting quite stressed um as to where the bus stop was going to be in evesham uh, whether the bus was going to be on time was it going to be the right bus how would i know what bus service it was how would i be able to pay all those kinds of things were going through my head and I was getting a bit stressed as I left this morning thinking about uh, the bus and uh, it's just I, I now have overcome that it was strange the only thing was they don't take I was expecting to pay contactless and the bus driver said you have to pay cash which is these Covid days is rather strange but it was only three pounds from Evesham to Broadway so that was good um, but uh, it, it all worked out fine um, but I was getting quite anxious about it and it just shows how um, something that can be comparatively trivial and to somebody else you it would just breeze through it and it wouldn't be present a, a problem at all can become a, a real stumbling block but uh, I pressed on ahead and got through it and well here I'm back on the Cotswold Way. So this is it this is the final descent to Chipping Camden. Um, so the end of Cotswold Way Part 1, the halfway point, I can't quite believe it. There is uh, the official point, the official start or the end at uh, the Cotswold Way is near the Market House, uh, which is an ancient uh, building as you'll see. And uh, so obviously we'll make our way there first and uh, I'll then do a little, uh, either a video or some photos showing you around the wonderful town here. Take a photograph then and it's difficult because it's a private residence and I'm obviously wary of uh, people's uh, privacy but uh, the cottage behind uh, has a blue plaque on it uh, denoting that was where uh, the writer Graham Green lived. Not sure the dates, I'll look that up and I'll put those in, drop those in on the video too.
that's just a few more meters to go till we get to the official finishing or start line of the Cotswold Way. This is it, this is the end of the Cotswold Way. Hope you enjoyed the tour going north and hope you'll rejoin me on the journey south in a few days' time. Cheers. Just come into the Ernest Wilson Memorial Garden here in Chipping Camden just to wish you goodbye. End of this vlog here, the northern section of the Cotswold Way. Hope you enjoyed it. I will include some clips and photos around the town of Chipping Camden. I'll drop in some bits of history on the old subtitles. Anyway, if you did like it, please consider a like, subscribe, a share, or a comment below. And hope you can join me again on Cotswold Way number 11 when we start our journey south and on my other adventures around the West Country. Until next time, look out for yourself and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye now.